Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. I hope you're liking my videos and do support my channel by subscribing to my channel and as well as liking my videos. So as we move ahead, do remember to connect with me on the LinkedIn as well and I will leave the link in the description box. So in today's video, we are going to see what is exactly a lake house and how is it different from a delta lake. So usually in some interviews also, they ask you this question to understand how much you understand about the lake house concept and about the delta lake. So what is the exact difference between the lake house and the delta lake? This is also what we, is what we are going to discuss today. So before moving on to the exact difference, I would like to tell you what the pattern has been till now. So earlier we used to have a data warehouse and slowly we moved on to the data lake and then we moved on to, to the lake house platform and I have a separate video on describing the features of all three of them as well and I will leave the link for that video as well in the description box. So remember that earlier data warehouses right we used to take the structured data from the databases you know in form of tables we used to have the data we used to perform ETL operations you know maybe on the you know pretty much structured format and then we used to build data warehouses all the data marts out of it which were used for the business intelligence you know we used to build you know bi reports on top of it so it was good but it had limited support for the machine learning workloads you know there was no streaming capabilities right you it was very difficult to scale out as well and at the same time it was definitely you know expensive to maintain as well because you needed a license for it you know and it was it pretty much had a very uh you know uh, difficult maintenance as well and at the same time it only supported structured data right and there was no support for the streaming so that is when we had data lakes which came into picture right so now what did data lakes give us they actually gave us the support for unstructured data as well so earlier we had support for the structured data now we had structure uh, support for the semi-structured and unstructured data as well now at the same time you know it gave you support for the streaming as well it helped you with the streaming as well now at the same time it supported you for your machine learning workloads it supported you for you know whenever you wanted to scale up you know it really helped you in that manner but then again there was a you know inherent problems with this data lakes was that you know when you talked about your data warehouses your databases in that everything was asset compliant right you could easily do an append you could easily change anything inside it you know uh, everything you know was pretty much structured metadata was very nicely handled in terms of in your data warehouses and your databases so e any updates deletes inserts was very easy to be done with the data warehouses which was not in the case of the data lake so data lakes actually you know were not very supportive in these parts and of course you know the query speeds became very low so now to support these cons which we had with the data lakes lake house came into picture now this is what we have right now right now they remember that this lake house it takes in your capabilities of both data lakes as well as data warehouse so you can say your lake house has the capabilities of your data warehouse your traditional data warehouse as well as your data lakes and it is a one single unified platform for every use case right what it does is it has support now it ha it, it overcomes all of your problems right it has support for your structured semi structured and unstructured data as well as you know it is asset compliant how it is asset compliant we are going to talk about it now it is asset compliant as well it supports your streaming it is good for your machine learning use case it's good for your bi use case and you know the storage as well there's no problem with the storage you can scale it up and down all the way you know there is no problem with the storage aspect at all you know you have a very high data throughput you know your queries are faster right and at the same time if you want to perform any kind of governance capabilities right it provides you a data lineage in itself using different tools and at the same time it supports all kind of data formats so that is what your lake house is all about now what exactly is this lake house technically so it is your data lake it is exactly same as your data lake but it has a layer of delta lake on top of it right how did data lake you know went to the lake house 
in the data lake if you add a layer of delta lake right it becomes a lake house remember that in the data lake if you add a layer of delta lake it becomes a lake house how because in this case using this delta lake it becomes acid compliant right when it becomes acid compliant it solves a lot of your problem the throughput increases right you are able to do upserts you are able to do updates inserts deletes very fast on the data lake without any issues right it gives you you know your lineage it gives you the history it maintains the history it maintains the transaction logs right it makes your whole data acid compliant that is what your lake house is all about right it makes streaming very easy as well now when you talk about lake house right even to make you understand it in one level deeper lake house is an open architecture right so just to give you an give you an example if you have data bricks if you have data lake which is your adls gen 2 if you use spark right which comes inherently with your data bricks and you use delta lake right this all becomes lake house so wherever if i say that correctly if you are using databricks which is nothing but the spark right you are using spark to interact with your data which is residing in the data lake and you are using delta lake on top of it it becomes your lake house now when i say delta lake now delta lake uses uh, acid compliance now how it uses that also we are going to discuss but i hope you understood it data bricks plus data lake using delta lake is nothing but your lake house now in this what is happening you are using data bricks as a tool where you are using spark to query whatever data is present in your data lake using delta lake this becomes your lake house architecture now here data bricks we are using for the data engineering tasks like your transformations and then we are using data lake for the cloud storage data lake for your cloud storage and we are using delta lake you know for additional functionalities which is nothing but your asset compliance mostly now when you talk about delta lake right it is a framework it is a framework which has been added to the data lake and it completes your lake house architecture it is used uh, basically it enables uh, as a transaction so when i say asset transaction atomicity consistency isolation and durability right so all these concepts are inherently present in the data lake it helps you in the metadata management it helps you in streaming and the batch processing it makes it very easy you know and it is compatible with the batch spark so that is why spark plus data lake plus delta lake is your lake house right and just because it is asset compliance it provides you you know very good and a compliant data it helps you in the data lineage as well so this is what your data delta lake is delta lake inherently it will use your delta tables so i had made a video on delta tables now this delta lake will use delta tables now these delta tables are what so whatever change you are doing whatever change you are doing what it will do it will store the transactions into the log file right and that is what is the core of your delta lake your delta tables right now when you talk about the lake house since it is in use most of the companies are implementing it lake house has multiple features you know by this time you would have already understood this features right because lake house is supporting multiple data formats it's it eases out your batch and stream processing you know you have a separate storage right your data lake is a storage and then your computation is your spark right it separates out your storage and computation it provides you easy governance and lineage as well you can do concurrent reads and writes and it has support for your ml and bi activities so this is what your lake house is all about so i hope you like this particular video do let me know in the comment section if you have any doubts or you want me to make video on any other topic and thank you so much for being till here and supporting me in my journey thank you so much